98 Not Out, sponsored by Shepherd Neen, proud supporters of cricket in Essex. Now this morning when I was having my tea and toast, I nearly spat my cornflakes out when I read an article in The Sun, other newspapers are available, um, and it was basically talking about question of sport, and I'm sure some of you or may, many of you will realise that they've had a bit of a rejig of the show, and Sue Barker, Matt Dawson and Phil Tufnell have been asked to stand down, much in the way of Soccer Saturday, and um, they are looking to revamp the show. It's been confirmed um, this afternoon that uh, former Arsenal defender Alex Scott will be in Sue Barker's chair, but the article was speculating about who the team captains might be. Now, one of the names that came up is a friend of ours, so he is being touted as a possible captain for Question of Sports. So we thought we'd get him on the phone and ask. So welcome to 98 Run Out, Mr Alex Tudor. Evening. Now. How are we, lads? What yeah, happened next? <laughs> so, so uh, Alex, um, are you the new captain? Um, I've not heard anything. <laughs> sent me a message this morning, and he put like a line as in question, small question mark, question mark. I'd only just dropped the kids off to school, and um, then he sent me the the link, and I was like, "Whoa, where did that come from?" <laughs> and it was like the Sun newspaper. I went, "Well, that just sums it up, didn't it?" That just it all. But um, yeah, no, like surprised. I suppose what flattered, but I'm I'm like. Why was that? I mean, I had a laugh with a lot of the staff at school and stuff like that. I said, if you want to hear a joke for the day. But I go, oh, dude, you'd be great. You, you know, be good. I said, mate, I've been out of the game <laughs> for near on 20 years, nearly. Like, not out of the game for 20 years, but I mean, I've got played international cricket since 2002. Um, yes, I've, you know, done some stuff within the media and stuff like that. But I was just thinking, you know, it's a little bit like, cause it's, a, like it's an institution. It's yeah. Christmas school, and... It's a little bit when, you know, you think of when Fergie left Man U and you're thinking, I don't know if you want to be the, the next person in line. You know, Sue Barker's done it for 24 years. Yeah. And then tough as a door has been, has, been, has, been, has been quality. So I'm thinking the pressure, mm. you know, for whoever they pick. Obviously, Alex Scott, I think she's fantastic. And, you know, it'll be, it'll be great for her and, and, and stuff like that. But the captains, you know, they need to get that right. Yeah. Um, was your sporting you know, knowledge to have not only you know I suppose with sporting knowledge or whatever, but they've got to have you know they've got to be bubbly and, and a bit of that a bit of comic relief and stuff like that. And you were all of that, Alex. Yeah. And I used to watch it when like Emily Hughes and, and I was going to say like that. Bill Bowman, Emily Hughes, that's <laughs> all my generation. There. David Coleman. Like, yeah, what? David Coleman, absolute legend. What, what's legend your, and what? um, you know used to watch it then. Uh, but you know, as I said, you know, times are changing. Well, um, that, you, you made a good point there because, yeah, and I'm old enough to remember those guys as well. And there was the same sort of uproar when Coleman, Botham, Beaumont, Hughes all sort of stood down. Yeah, um, and it was like, what are they going to do? This, you know, back then it was it's an institution. I, then I think the difference there was they done them. They, I don't think they'd done all three at once, did they? You should do one, then the other, then the other. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. never really gone all three. What, what's your sporting knowledge like, though? You, uh, you, you, I don't, you don't know. I, I like my sport. I mean, listen, you're going to have people in your team, but I mean, listen, I'm uh, we're having a little bit of a joke in there. I, uh, <laughs> no one's even. I mean, I said first I've heard of it was this morning. Um, was that I'm me? I'm sure they're further down the line in who they're thinking, but, you know, who's there? Jermaine Genesee, obviously, where you're already working for the BBC, um, to Chris Hoy, Jason Robertson, they, you know, they're like a rugby lad, yeah. don't they? Um, so I don't know. I mean, it, it, I feel like even them mentioning my name, I feel like, okay, if, you know, if that's what they want to do, and it, it's great, and, you know, it's a massive issue, but I, you listen, I mean, we can have a laugh about it, but I can't, I can't <laughs> see them calling my my phone is saying, yeah, Alex, we would like you to be, you know, one of the tea cats. So I'd be like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> or, or of course the names you... that they could get and they're going to call me. I mean, Jesus, what, 10 test <laughs> matches? And... <laughs> or maybe you're just denying it all and you are actually there. <laughs> Can you imagine the, the stick? You know, half the people are like, well, and who is he? <laughs> <laughs> I, I was saying to Darren, though, but you, you actually look at the format of the show now. If you ask most young people who those three people are, they yeah. might know them from a question of sport. And if you went to them, well, what else did they do? Someone would probably go, oh, that 
tough normal bloke won the jungle, didn't it? Don't know what the other two have done, though. <laughs> it's, like, it's interesting. Fred, Fred, you know, Freddie Flintoff makes an interesting point. Like, he says, his, like, his kids, you know, he's got young kids, but even people see now, they don't even remember he played cricket. Ah. They're like, that's the Giacomo guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's the Giacomo guy. And that's the guy on League of Their Own. And, you know, he went in the jungle in, in Australia and he, you know, done all the adverts and, and the programs that he's done, Ninja Warriors and blah, blah, blah. Oh, doing top game now. Huh? He had a career in cricket. Yeah. Mm. And I guess and League of Their Own as well. Yeah, that's right. You know, and, and how well that's done and how well that's watched. You know what I mean? It's like, that's what they remember. They forget they had a career. It's a bit like Ramps. And Ramps won strictly. Yeah. People forgot that he had played for 25 years, and they just go, oh, yeah, he's the bloke who won Strictly. <laughs> Strictly's been it's, good it's, for it's, cricketers, it's, isn't it? Pardon? Strictly's been good for cricketers. You had Ramps, anyway, it's been Vaughan. Good for the ones that could dance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I think, what is it, uh, Goffey, Goffey. Goffey did it the year before in 05, Ramps did it in 06, and then obviously you had Tuffers did it, and then Vaughan. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, yeah, Strictly. Gucci. has been quite good for the old... Uh, for the cricketers but yeah yeah I don't think the wife is allowing me on that one <laughs> <laughs> let's bring it back to cricket then what, what have you made of the international summer oh it's been I think sport in general I think you know the football picked up once the lads got fit and we saw better games and stuff like that, and, and that was good the cricket's been outstanding I, I didn't expect the quality that we yeah. did get on show I mean pretty much all the games were pretty close um there was there was some great stuff early on from the West Indies, and then obviously England came back. You know, Stokesy and stuff were outstanding. Um, and Stuart Broad, after you know being missing that first yeah. game, and he sort of showed people that he's still the man and he's still about. Um, and the one day is you know it, you know Ireland rocked us, you know, um, but that can happen because they got some you know Sterling and, and Skipper Not played extremely side. well and had a day out and uh, did extremely well, and then. Pakistan came out and, and they looked good and got some good youngsters so you know the future for Pakistan cricket looks good and then obviously Australia we always love when Australia come and they came with a strong side and you know we went toe to toe and you know I thought when they were five down yeah they're done but then obviously the big show Maxwell and Kerry Alex Kerry batted extremely well and, and, and it's the importance of just staying in the game staying in the game a 58 58 yard boundary on one side I mean yeah, I always moan about the boundaries. People, that, <laughs> you know, sort of follow me on social media or whatever, and they hear me. I always moan, you know, the poor bowlers. You know, 58 boundary. I mean, the kids at my school could clear that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so um, you know, it uh, it was a great game. It was I a great game. Went down to the wire. I know everyone sort of jumped on Owen a little bit about why is he bowling the spinner, crazy. but you know, you know, absolute madness. <laughs> um, you know, he, he obviously thinking, you know, let's get Rash on. He. he I was, the only upset thing I was is why Rash threw that ball up to stock. He's got no levers. He bowled him a wrong, but it had a lot of air time. Yeah. And he just yeah. needs to get near it. And as I said, his boundaries are too far. I think he'll fire it in, bowl like a fast one or something. You know, dig it in. And, but it, it happens. And that's the thing, in it? And you're a hero if you win it. Yeah. Villain if you do. And, and, and that's unfortunately what happened. But for people to sort of question Morgan is just a joke. And a question though if you're in that dressing room do you feel that you've lost the game or do you just have to sort of say no they those guys won the game they they just they've just beat us today I, I would say um, yeah they won I, I just think you know as you say Maxwell has that in him Alex Gill is a, is a good player sort of batting out of you know people that sort of know about it. he sort of opens the batting generally for his franchise like Australia and stuff like that so you know he's a good player um and as you say, you know, it was a, d a decent wicket. Yes, it turned. You know, you know, Joe Root, you know, getting Warner, that was a fantastic delivery. And then yeah. getting Marsh, who was thinking it's gathering turns. So, you know, save Rash for the end to bowl at the lower order. But those two just kept going. And as they said, Maxwell peppered that boundary. And then Alex Kerry carried it on. So you just got to hold your hands up. People are allowed to be better than you on the day. And uh, I think on a whole, Australia were just maybe just slightly better than us in all facets and, and, and they and they ended up winning 2-1 have you been watching any of the county stuff on the YouTube streams as well no I, I follow it on like um, 
like I get up the scores just to see, you know, who's doing what, what are people doing, who's scoring the runs, who's getting wickets. I see my boy Darren Stevens is still rocking it <laughs> at 44, cleaning up. Ma- you makes know, you think you stop. Grey hair, he's Ma- running up, bowling at 70, mid 70s, and swinging it all over the place, and, and still picking up fifers. And you know, he's got another year, so I'm really happy for him. Yeah. Um, and you know, some some younger younger guys doing doing well and getting some runs and some wickets. So you know. It's been great. I think it's real. I've got a few friends who are umpiring. James Middlebrook's umpiring, and you know he's he's, he's been really impressed with the, the quality that the lads have put on display. As you say, with no crowds and stuff. So you know, credit to all of those guys going out there and getting back out there. As you say, you know they're in these bubbles. They've he's been in yeah, it for we, a long time, not seen families. And we were just like talking that. about that just before incredible. you came. Just before you came on, we were talking about that, and um, a lot of them have gone. Straight after the game last night, I've got straight onto planes and gone out to the Emirates to take part in the IPL. Um, we're just discussing here about this, the impact on players' mental well-being. Um, mm. You know, living constantly in bubbles. You know, they've been in a ten-week bubble. If you've been playing for England, uh, now to go off and be part of a two-month tournament. Um, have you got any thoughts on you know how that could affect people, players' minds and bodies? Yeah, it can do massively. Um, I think is it not. Joffre, Joffre had come out, I think was he spent, he's was he been the longest of us, you know, he had that little blip in between, didn't he, when he sort of made that detour home, whatever, so he's had 87 days in a bubble. Yeah. Um, so I think he, he may, possibly, obviously, he'll go out to the IPL, but I think he won't do the big bash. I mm. think he might, he might, he might, he may give that a miss, but, um, yeah, you know, a long time, especially for guys who've got kids. Yeah, and, yeah. And, you know, even though you've got Skype and you can see him, it's not the same actually physically seeing your kids and your wife and that but it's a shame but I think they understand the sacrifice that the guys are making listen you know I know people say yeah about the money they make and all that sometimes it's not all about the no, money no it isn't um, you, to, you do have to throw about the well-being but I think the ECB have been great and um, you know they've got you know playrooms that they can go and play and pool or whatever it yeah. is the guys they take their consoles now and they're you know everyone that knows about Joffrey he loves his he loves his um, Xbox and stuff like that, so he's on that. But as you say, there's only so much you can do, yeah. isn't it? So, you know, I'm sure there's people talking to them, just making sure they're all right, speaking to their loved ones, keep going. But, I mean, what they're doing for, as you said, in these mad times, you know, the sacrifice and, and getting out there and producing the quality of sport that they're doing, um, you know, we're forever grateful for, for all of them and, and especially the teams that came over, you know, where, what, the... The worst in Europe as in regards to coronavirus, you know, for the West Indies, Pakistan, um, you know, and then Australia to come out and, yeah. and, and agree to be in the bubble is a, a testament to all of them. And we thank them all. We like to thank them all for what they've done. And, you know, we've been able to watch them on the box and uh, give us some thrilling games. Yeah. Bringing it close to home, um, and obviously your day job is at Kim Bolton School. Um, yeah. How's that been going back to school? Yeah, it's been good. It's been good seeing the kids. I mean, generally, especially in the summer term, we don't see them maybe for, what, two months? Yeah. So six months is a long time. So a lot yeah. of these lads are coming back. Listen, they're rocking. They're nearly bigger than me. <laughs> I, had to, I, had to, I had to pull a couple of them up. I was like, <laughs> especially because, you know, um, in between movements, you know, we're wearing the mask and stuff. So it's like, and who's that kid? And who's that? And, like, and they get them, oh, right. You're like, jeez, you shot up. And yeah, so I've grown six inches and... Yeah, my, all my clothes don't fit no more. And blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's been great to just see them, you know, to get out there. Obviously, I, I, you know, I, we see them for sport. It's football that we've gone back to. And just seeing them with a smile on their face, playing with their friends. Because, like what you were saying about the lads in the bubble and the mental state, I was, I was really worried for some of these kids, the mental state, not being able to see their friends yeah. and, and get out there and do stuff. I just, you know, I, the importance of just getting them back and just seeing them having fun, having a laugh with their friends and stuff. And, and playing some sport and just getting some activity because I know a lot of them that first day back we had senior sport and after five minutes lads were asking me sir can I have a drink and can I have a little bit of a rest I said what did you do for six months and they were like nothing sir <laughs> and how are the knees run couldn't get on a bike no sit ups no push ups nothing just like nah computer laptop whatever <laughs> so uh, it's just nice to get them back out last time you were on you were saying about it takes you ten minutes to get out of a car these days how are your knees Actually, my, my right knee, I, I did like a, and people hammer me about, you know, I don't do enough sort of leg weight. So I did a, a leg session the other the other week and just, uh, I've suffered. 
are right knee. <laughs> and um, it takes a while, but the weather's helped. Good. The weather definitely helps me. Um, so the sunshine on my body it definitely helps. I'm, I'm, I'm going to suffer in the winter. <laughs> um, but, yeah, you know, I, I try and do my exercise. And what you, what you need what you need is a job where you're sat at a desk with a couple of mates either side of you and in a nice warm studio... <laughs> <laughs> my husband has been up a music every two minutes, mate. If I sit down for a period of time, honestly, you will see me when I get out. <laughs> and always ask me, what's wrong with you choose? I'm like, listen, my knees now, you know, I've had four knee operations, etc. It takes them a while to get warm, but once they're down, I'm okay. But oh. if I'm sat down for a period of time, I don't move too well. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll have to break the exclusive news. That as far as you know, you're not going to be a captain on a question of sport. Uh, to, uh, I, to my knowledge, I have uh, no one has uh, contacted me, even had a sniff of asking me the question. Um, so I would say the likelihood is that I shall people will not see me um, as one of the team captains on a question of sport. But Mark, Mark, it, Mark Butcher's just texted. He's saying he's all right if he has a go. Yeah, uh, listen, Butch would be quality. You know, he can, he can bring a little bit of uh, it's that a question. soulful voice. On there, you know, who's been the last thing been able to sing? Yeah, it's a question of sport, not a question of music. Butch will have no <laughs> well, chance, will he? You could, you, could, you, could, you could ask a question. <laughs> uh, a bit of sporting knowledge, that's what you need. But yeah, anyway, you need. if the BBC do call, um, you know, if, if you want to give us a 10% finest fee, if they've decided on the back of this interview that you are the man, <laughs> we'll, we'll happily accept it. <laughs> oh, good man, good man. <laughs> Dude, fanta forward, fantastic catching up with you, and um, great that we can have a good laugh about quite a funny story. So, <laughs> <laughs> all the best, mate. Take Cheers, care. Mate. Take care. Right, guys, wait for the call. Thanks yeah. a lot. Bye. We'll catch up.